shake, they rattle, and occasionally roll. They're the most violent, unpredictable racing machines man has yet conceived. Funny cars, floppers, plastic fantastics, call them what you will, but their five-second, 260-mile-an-hour combat packs the grandstands like no other breed. The Mount St. Helens of the quarter mile. Their roots are the stock cars of the early 60s that sent many a loyal dragster fan to the hot dog stand. They said race cars don't have doors. Then something funny happened. The stock cars started doing wheel stands. Street cars didn't do that. Then a blower or two showed up on full-bodied steel cars and they got even funnier. That's funny as in peculiar. Suddenly, the fans were cheering wildly for the Dodge, the Ford, the Chevy, whatever they owned. Product identity, some trackside psychologists said. Then came nitro, plastic bodies, tube frames, and a troop of touring stars with colorful nicknames. They blazed the tires across the continent, leaving some legendary stories in their wake. When NHRA accepted them as a real racing class, the unfortunate name had stuck, Funny Cars. front end off the starting line and the people went nuts and that's really where it came from the first funny cars like this one at dick landy were not built from the ground up they were modified a factory experimental cars an official nhra class that had strong factory participation ford ran their single overhead cam racing engine here uh, later their famed shotgun hemi of course chrysler corporation with its hemi and all of the big block chevrolets the factories were actually using hot rodders all over the country as R&D contract specialists, coming up with exciting new projects, from carburetors to camshafts. The racing was close and exciting, and many a fan thrived on it. But for these drivers, the rules were a little too restrictive. They wanted to go quicker and faster no matter what the rules were. And the first modification they made was to the wheelbase, moving that rear axle forward for better weight transfer. At first, just a few inches. By 1965, the wheelbase had been altered a foot and a half. Suddenly, carburetors were replaced with fuel injectors poking through the steel hoods. Roll bars had been installed. And in some of the tanks, nitromethane instead of gasoline. Well, the next logical step, superchargers. And suddenly, these cars took on their own identity, funny cars. By 1965, some real innovations started to appear, such as lightweight flip-top fiberglass bodies. They greatly reduced the weight of the automobile while still maintaining the look of a Detroit product. Gone were the stock frames. Now it was chrome molly tubular steel, which not only made the cars quicker and faster, but they handled better and were safer. And now that the funny car was a true racing machine, it was time for a dose of showbiz, the crowd-pleasing burnout and its greatest practitioner, the famed Chi-Town Hustler. Now, the burnout was originally a performance tool. It was uh, done just to put a little rubber down on the racetrack, get the tires good and hot, but the crowd reacted wildly, and soon drivers were trying to outdo one another for the fans' attentions, and of course, the promoters who booked in these cars to put on nothing more than a drag racing show. Strong personalities surfaced, supported by almost cult-like fans, and soon rivalries developed, real or imagined, and that formed the basis for many an exciting match race. You could hardly turn on a rock and roll radio station without hearing three announcers screaming, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. In 1970, the National Hot Rod Association legitimized the cars by creating a separate funny car eliminator on the national event tour. And suddenly these cars were exposed to television, to ever-growing crowds, to sponsors, and a professional form of motorsports had arrived. 
and the altitude record for a body launch was set at Fremont Raceway by Joe Winter. Yeah, that's an example, Steve, of just what we were talking about, uh, how these funny car bodies can get airborne uh, when, th when there's an explosion of some sort. And uh, I think he lost a body latch or something at that time. I don't, I don't really see an explosion. At Fremont in those days, uh, they would actually break the body up into little bitty pieces and sell them for souvenirs to help the guy buy a new body. <laughs> In 1970, Paul Smith went for a wild ride, Kenny. Oh, he did. He had his hands full. Obviously, it picked the front end up, as you could see, leaving the starting line. Went up, came back down. He got back in again in the throttle and up again, and it threw the body right off the car. And that was just a situation there of having your hands full and really not aborting a run when you should have early. Yeah, Kenny, but I think we're all guilty of that. When you're on a good run, it's just hard to lift. And in Paul's case there, it was doing a wheel stand, setting it down, didn't want to abort the run. And I believe it just got too much air up underneath the body. Well, Snake, you had the best seat in the house at the 75 Spring Nationals, Raymond Beadle. Yeah, it was in the final round. I was racing Raymond. He was off on a heck of a run. His car was started carrying the front end, and I could see it out the corner of my eye. I thought, boy, when's he going to lift? Well, I'm telling you, he got it up, too. It went up, and just like you said before, Snake, the wind got the body, and off she came, and out the parachute comes. At the 84 Gators, it was Ron Kareni who found yet another way to shed a body, Kenny. Oh, he sure did. And a tremendous blower explosion right off the starting line, blowing the blower concussion style right off the body, right off the car, by, just like a big firecracker going off in a can. Well, there were some cars out there that the word funny did apply. Funny ha-ha. stock bodies uh, but suddenly mainly in the interest of white things started to change well sure uh, fiberglass of course came into play uh, matter of fact Don Nicholson's car like we pointed out was a fiberglass car but the uh, funny car bodies today are, are much the same 